Hey, how's it going? I'm Rob. I'm going to show you a process I use to create textures in a scene like this. Here's a scene. A lot of times you'll find yourself in a situation where you model a complex scene, but then you have to go and assign shaders to each individual piece, and this can be an overwhelming task. So the best way to do it is to come up with a couple different workflows to quickly generate shaders. <clears throat> One way to do that is to actually model the textures from within your 3D program and then tweak them later in Photoshop. So let me show you how to do that. First, let's create a new scene. Okay, here's our new scene. So I'll start out with a cube and use this as the template or the, this will be the size of the texture basically right here. And then we'll model details onto this which we can break down into different layers like the bump map and the specular map and stuff. So first thing you want to do is you just want to add some details and um, However you go about doing this, just, you can be original and just come up with new stuff. It pretty much turns out differently every time, however you like it to. So I'll just give it a little bit of depth, maybe add a couple more loops to it. And then, uh, let's see, maybe I'll just extrude this down a couple times. Okay. All right, so there we go. So then what we'll do is we'll just add a few details, like maybe make a couple bolts and stuff. Make it look like it's connected together somehow. Let's see. <coughs> just extrude this out a couple times. <clears throat> Alright, there we go. We got something going here. Maybe we'll add a couple pipes running through here. Okay, we got something going on here. Just kind of make this up as you go. Let your mind wander while you're generating 3D polygons. Okay, there we go. So, we'll call that quits for the modeling part of it, but you can go as far as you want, add as many details. You know, you're really unlimited by the poly count because this is all going to be turned into a two dimensional rasterized image in the end. So, next step is we'll make a Z depth map. Okay, so the next step is I want to make a Z depth map for this so I can um, you use that to help me create the bump map and displacement map later on in Photoshop. So the best way to do that is to go from the side and create a projection from the side. So basically that lays out my UVs going up and down. And then um, what I'll do is I'll create basic Lambert shader and um, then I'll make a ramp and connect that at first into the color. And so then you can see kind of how that uh, how that works. Basically it goes from red to blue. But um, I don't want that to be red to blue. I want that instead to be black to white. So that uses the basic grayscale gradient. 
to define the depth of the of the model itself. And you usually want some black and some white to show. So that'll work for me. The next thing to do is to actually instead of connecting this to the color, what you want to do is you want to connect this to the incandescence. So that way it'll um it won't you can render the full range without having any effects from CG lighting. So we'll go ahead and do a render of that and see how that looks. And you can kind of see that you can tell how far away something is by how dark it is. So this is a good good little tool to use. So I'll save that right there. And then next I'll move on to the specular map. Okay, so the specular map's even simpler than that. Basically, I'll just delete this and um, make a couple more Lambert shaders. And, um, you know, depending on how many different materials you want to be have represented in the scene, I'll just um, do a couple of them. So, for instance, I'll make these pipes. Uh, I'll just I'll just have like a three different ones. And then um, assign this one to that, and this one. Okay, and then assign that to that. Okay, so now what you want to do, turn off the color, and turn off the diffuse, and just give it different levels of incandescence. So the pipes, I want it to be kind of, uh, you know, I want the pipes to be shinier, so they're going to be whiter, as well as the, the bolts. I'll make those have a little bit of incandescence, probably a little bit less than that. And then for the background, I'll have that be um, kind of dark, but a little bit. And that's pretty much it. So now I'll just do the same kind of render and then. Okay. So, you know, it just breaks it down into different layers. It's kind of like an object mask in a way. So here we go. I'll save that. So now I'll render a uh, color texture. So basically, I can't cut, made a couple different materials. Pretty simple. And I'll, um, I'll just go through and apply them to this thing. Let me. Um, give this thing an automatic mapping and uh, <coughs> we'll just apply these different materials to it and then um, maybe I'll just I'll create a a light so I have a little bit of shadows but this is all completely optional Okay, and then uh, just give it a quick render and see how it turned out. Okay, <clears throat> so it's something, you know, you can obviously do a lot more work on this, but I just want to show you the basics. So let's take this over to Photoshop and see how it worked out. So then we have our th three different uh, layers here. Okay. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop. Um, I re-rendered this to actually have shadows casted on it and put, turn the ray tracing on, basically. So um, now what I want to do is I want to go and add some more detail to this with a, a cool filter in Photoshop, basically the, the wave command. And, or it's a distortions of waves. So what I'll do, make these squares um go to filter distort wave and then um you know there's different wave types but the cool one is square and then you can kind of mess with this and get some interesting results i'll just kind of maybe turn up the number of generators a little bit okay there we go something like that so then I'll take that turn down this opacity a little bit then uh, tramp I'll just rotate this thing 90 degrees and um, maybe go over the blending options and then 
have it uh we have it multiply it maybe so where it's overlapping is a little bit darker so it's hard to see what's going on here that's basically what's happening so um so yeah I mean that's that's just a start I'll flatten those two things together and then you can go in here and actually use your specular map and um, select a certain color range and turn that back on and then just delete anything that you don't want to be affected by that so now we, d we have uh, that pattern but only on the parts that we want so now we can turn this on and you can kind of see its effect maybe you mess with this blending options a little bit and you, know, you can try all sorts of different things here some of them work better than others yeah that'll work okay so I'll just um, copy merge that and then paste it onto a new layer and, uh, and then I'll go on to the, the bump map well you know I mean that works it's something so I might as well just keep it I guess copy merge that paste it and then um, let's see what we got here the specular map you know I might as well I'm being real original here but I'll just invert it just for fun because it's usually good practice to not have all your maps be the same image it kind of gives it away a little bit but you know who's gonna really know actually what I'll do here is um, turn down the opacity a little bit so I have more definition in my specularity. Copy it and paste it. Okay. So now what do we have? That's our new spec map. That's our bump map. And that's our color map. So now let's take it back into Maya and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm back in Maya. Created a couple primitives to test out our new texture with. And um so here I just created a blend, basic blend shader, and then to the color connected our color map, and same with the specular and the bump map, and um, so I just applied it to them, kind of see what it looks like, give it a quick render, check out the bump map. And there you go. So. Um, Basically, just about every step along the way, you can spend more time on and give it, you know, more fine details. I just want to quickly show you guys the different steps that you can take to quickly generate a texture from your 3D program, work on a little bit in Photoshop, and then bring it right back into Maya. So, I hope you learned something. Thanks for joining me, and uh, see you next time. Bye.